second attempt. <clears throat> oh my goodness, it's already starting off poorly. I find a section of the original manuals of Noble Lab, I read from them, and then I talk about them. Description, Fierce Feline. There is a medium to large sized cat weighing 40 to 60 kilograms. Oh, sorry. This is a medium to large sized cat weighing 40 to 60 kilograms. They live both in the trees and on the ground. The feline uses the trees as a lookout for food as well as a means of ambushing its prey. They live for roughly 20 years and can produce a litter of four to six kittens once a year after their first year. Real world creatures which are similar to these simulation creatures include the leopard cat and the flat headed cat of Southeast Asia. So, the noble apes have predators, or have a primary predator. Um, they have other things that can cause them trouble. But the primary predator that they have is the fierce feline. And the fierce feline was developed in the early noble ape simulation primarily as something to cultivate around fear. Like, if you have fear and desire, but you have no natural predators, fears, like, you're scared of some other ape that might be poisoning you or throwing rocks at you or things like this. But if you have a feline, a large predatorial cat, that preys on young apes, and preys actually on the weak and the elderly as well, then you have a completely different simulation. And for me, when I started developing Noble Ape, now I've done all the software previously, but it was launched when I was in Malaysia. And Malaysia for me was an amazing experience because you had the uh, macaques, which are, um, they're not just in Malaysia, they go up to Japan. There are macaques in Japan, they're the ones that... Did, bathe in the steaming baths and what have you. And they're really curious creatures. And obviously you've got orangutans and various other kinds of ape creatures, but you also have cats. And when I was in Malaysia, I did a lot of traveling, but when I was based in Malaysia, I was based primarily in Kuala Lumpur on the outskirts of Kuala Lumpur. I can't remember what the suburb was called. Uh, anyway, I was, I was based in Kuala Lumpur and there were feral cats. There were feral cats that had was kind of Soprano esque like interactions. You'd, have meetings of two different gangs of feral cats and they meet in kind of collectives and they were evenly weighted, the heavies on the sides and the usually slightly spryer, you know, whatever cats were in the middle. So seeing cats like that was one thing. Seeing monkeys as I saw in Malaysia was another. But what I found really surreal was one time I slept on the ground floor and as was the case in Malaysia, there were barb, not barbed wire, but, but windows with slats in them. And, you know, there was a kind of safe room. And there were all these things about Malaysia based on the notion that, um, oh, it, historically, particularly for diplomats, my mother was a diplomat, the, there were problems in Malaysia, right? There have been wars and these kind of things and insurrections and all this kind of stuff. Malaysia now, no chance of that going on. But in the 60s, you know, these things happened. In the 70s, there were threats of these things happening. So all the older houses had all these things. Anyway, I was staying in a room, which would have been easy to... at uh, the front of the house. Windows open because it was hot and humid. And um, I was... I don't even know if I was sleeping. I was in that phase where just before you go to sleep, basically... And I saw this arm reach in and as if they were going to like grab the inner bars. And then the arm fell off and I realized it was a cat. So my immediate assumption was that it was like a feral cat, but it was much larger than that. So I turned the light on and this thing was looking back at me and this was a cat with human eyes. This was the flat faced cat that I described actually in the original manuals, a cat with human eyes staring back at me and it just started to run. And it started to run so fast that it was running around the walls of the room that I was in. And it was just going crazy. So I opened the wall, the door, and it ran into the main living area. And then I opened the door to the outside and it ran out. But for an instant, I came face to face with a cat with human eyes. And it was a, it was a wild cat. It wasn't a cat like I'd ever seen previously. The cats that I'd seen in Kuala Lumpur were all, like, predominantly Portuguese, but cats, like, you know, domestic cats, except they were feral. They lived on the streets. They were street cats. And some of them had, uh, like, Manx-like tails, but most of those were just cut off by the locals. But this was actually, like, a wild cat. 
like an indigenous wild cat, an indigenous cat species that had human eyes. And it was too small to cause me any harm. It could have caused me harm, I guess, if it was confronted or what have you. I was very careful just to, you know, open doors to get it to <laughs> leave the space. But yeah, that was a very surreal interaction with a creature that I probably, I mean, it wouldn't have ended well for either of us, I'm sure, but I probably should have studied more. So this was when I was first in Malaysia, and this really impacted me very strongly. And seeing the feral cats interact with me with, impacted me strongly as well, although I was a relatively passive observer of that. So as I was developing Noble Ape, I mean, you've got to imagine the development of Noble Ape is... I had literally half a dozen pieces of software that I just had on a hard disk where, you know, one was compiler software, antiviral software, landscape visualization. Um, the antiviral software, I've talked about this a little bit, but it's associated with like agar population. So this is heuristic analysis of virus propagation. So I had all these bits and pieces which were literally just directories of software that I ran, you know, and some of it I the antiviral software was actually an application. In fact, they were all applications, as one would call them these days. But they were all just little bits of software or different bits of software that I'd written. So it was a matter of getting these bits of software to coalesce and then also adding the additional bits of software, like the linking software in between to explain the various bits and pieces. So the Fierce Felines, there was a document that I wrote called The Cat versus Ape Problem, which outlined a variety of different things like because I had a simulation associated with the cognitive simulation of noble apes and I had to kind of slight, not really physiology, just point in space almost with energy and direction facing, this kind of stuff. So the, there was a sub-being which could either be a noble ape or a fierce feline, but the cognitive development and the way in which these things developed, I mean, ideally what I wanted was a, a fierce feline cognitive simulation, which I did, smaller, like, brain size than the ape, but same underlying values, but considerably different associated with how stuff was transmitted because it was a smaller brain, but also I wanted to model intrinsically what a cat was versus what an ape was through the cognitive simulation. So about, I don't know, when it got, when I rewrote Noble Ape, which I did in Stockholm in 2000, I removed the fierce fear lines. And I wanted to reintroduce the Fierce Fear Lines. There was some reintroduction code, which I've never really gotten into, but the whole thing with the Fierce Fear Lines was really psychological. It was just an additional psychology that influenced the simulation greatly and was very negative and survival, you know, almost paranoia, basically. So when I removed it, it was very easy to remove. And it wasn't, it was never really finished properly. But the physiology of the cats were added and beautiful drawings and stuff associated with that. But they weren't really as fully baked as the apes. And I always felt difficult. I find this a complete tension. I did a podcast with a fellow and we were reviewing rules associated with um, the current conflicts in Iraq and Afghanistan. And the fact that the combatants, the enemy combatants were like ghosts. They weren't active or as rep well represented as the American forces were, for example. I thought that was a real negative thing. And with Noble Ape 2, the fact the Fierce Felines weren't as grounded or as real as the Noble Apes in the software sense just made them easy to remove. But I've always felt bad about that. I've got to reintroduce the Fierce Felines. Just got to get that emotional energy back in there. And this is a special shout out to Melit Kutash, actually, because this topic came to me directly because of Melek Kutash. So I want to send a shout out to him. He's a Jordanian farmer, a, a Jordanian man of leisure, probably more than a farmer now. But I wanted to send a shout out to him because he was asking about the Fierce Felon specifically when I posted the weather simulation stuff. And it's good that people still remember the Fierce Felines. Important part of Noblape.